In this video, we're going to talk about the show method. Suppose you have a roll of paper towels. So you have the cardboard in the middle, which I just drew, and you have the roller paper. Now, how about we take off one layer? Well, that layer, if you put it on a flat piece of table, on a table, it would be a rectangle. Now, this here, that's how far around it went, which is the circumference, 2 pi r. And the height is h. And there is a little thickness to the paper. Not too much, but the paper is not one dimensional. The paper is two dimensions. Okay, so the volume is going to be 2 pi r h times the thickness. The change in the volume. And, you know, I don't know whether to call it delta x or delta y because. Some problems will be delta x, some will be delta y. But since we're on, we're revolving around the x-axis, it'll be a delta x. Now, what we do is, so now that sheet, that one revolution is gone. So now, we do... The next revolution, we peel that one off. And then we do another revolution, the next one. And we take that one off. So what happens in the end, the volume is going to be the integral of 2 pi r h, say, times dx. And of course, the constant can come out in front. So there's the motivation for the formula to be the integral from a to b of 2 pi r h dx. Let me just write it with the 2 pi in front. So one formula is 2 pi times the integral from a to b. And the other formula is just going to be v is equal to 2 pi, say, from r to s of r times h times dy. Those are the two formulas. Now, suppose we have the curve. Y is equal to x minus x cubed. And we want to revolve this curve. Now, we're only talking about the positive x-axis. And we want to revolve about the y-axis. So right off the bat, we'll go y-axis. Now, when it comes to this function, let's find the zeros. I can factor out an x, and then I get that. And then what's in those brackets is the difference of squares. So I can factor that. And this equals 0 when that's 0 x is 0, x is 1, well, when that's 0, which is negative 1. And it is a negative x cubed. 
positive x cubes go that way. That's where the leading coefficient is positive. And negative x cubes go that way. So I know that this cube, cubic, is going to cross at 0 and at 1 and at negative 1. And it is a negative x cubed because the coefficient of x cubed is negative 1. So there's our curve. But we only care about the positive x-axis. So I'm going to get rid of this. And so you have the curve and the positive x-axis. You have this curve and that curve. That's the area that we are going to revolve. And we want to revolve it about the y. You know, I think it's much easier so we want to re revolve it around the y-axis. So let me just erase this in the middle. And one of the slabs is going to go that way. Okay, it's going to go parallel to the y-axis. When you do the shell method, you go parallel to what you're revolving about, and the disk method is perpendicular. So the volume is going to be, well, it's an integral, and when it comes to these slabs, they go from zero all the way up to one. And let's see. We have 2 pi times r times h times dx. So what is the radius? Now, remember that this piece here is rotating around. Well, maybe that was a terrible picture of what's going on. Our function goes like this, from 0 to 1, and we have this slab. Well, this slab is going around in a circle. It's spinning around the x-axis. What is the radius? The radius is that distance. Well, that's x. And what is the height? How tall is that piece? Well, that piece is y. Now, you can put y there, but it can only be temporary because <coughs> you can only have x's. So the next line, for example, you would put this. And now we're done just have to integrate. The integral is 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1. Let's distribute before we integrate. Okay, so we have 2 pi. The integral of x squared, you add 1, you divide by that number, minus x to the fourth, you add 1 to the power, and you divide by that power from 0 to 1. When you plug in 1, you're going to get 1 cubed, which is 1 over 3, minus 1 to the fifth, which is 1 over 5. And when you plug in 0, you're going to get nothing. So now we need to add these two. If I multiply the first fraction by 5 over 5, which is 1, so I'm not changing the value, and the second fraction by 3 over 3, I get 2 pi times 5 over 15, 
minus 3 over 15. So I know I'm over 15 and the top is 2. Multiplying that by 2 pi gives me 4 pi. So the volume will be 4 pi over 15 cubic units, whatever the units are. Cubic feet, cubic centimeters, cubic something. Next problem. Suppose we have functions bounded by x squared plus 1, y equals 0, and x goes in between 0 and 1. And we want to go about the y-axis, about y-axis. We want to rotate the bounded region by those three curves, actually four curves, about the y-axis. So let us draw our axes, label them x and y. And x squared plus 1. Well, I know x squared plus 1, x squared looks like that, so I raise it up by 1. So this is one of the curves. The next curve is y equals 0. Okay, that's this line, y equals 0. And the next one is x is bigger than x is 0. X is 0 is right here, and X equals 1 is right here. Now, well, this is X equals 0, and this is X equal 1. Question is, what area, if any, is bounded by the blue curve, the green curve down there, and the two pink curves. This one, oops, yellow curves. This one and this one. And down here, it's the pink curve. All right, the area is that area right there. And we want to rotate about the y-axis. That means that the slabs go parallel to the y-axis because we're using this shell method. Okay, so we have this slab. And first of all, the, uh, the slabs are going from the beginning. That's when x is 0. So the volume is going to be 2 pi times r times h. And these are delta x's. So it's dx, and x starts at 0, and it ends over there where x is 1. So it's going from 0 to 1. Now, what is the radius? Well, when you rotate this around, this here around the y-axis, that's the radius. That's x. And the height is defined by y equal x squared plus 1. It's the y value. The height is the y value, which is x squared plus 1. Okay, so what we get is 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1. When you distribute this, you get x cubed plus x dx, and now we'll integrate, but we'll factor out the 2 pi. So you get x to the 4 over 4 plus x squared over 2 from 0 to 1. And in this case, when you plug in 0, you're going to get 0. So we'll just plug in 2. I'm sorry. We'll just plug in 1. So you get 1 quarter plus 1 half. If you have a quarter of a dollar and somebody gives you a half a dollar, you have 3 quarters of a dollar. And the 2 goes into the 4 2 times. So it's 3 pi over 2, the volume. Let us try 
another problem. Suppose you have that y is equal to x cubed plus x plus 1, y equals 1, and x equals 1. And you want to revolve about x equal 2. Okay. Well, y equals 1 is that function y equal 1, that graph I mean to say x equals 1 is this graph and x cubed plus x plus 1 well if you plug in 0 you get 1 so it's right here and then it goes like this. But let's just use a different color for that if I have. Let's use blue. So this is the area that's between the green line, the pink line, and the curve, the cubic. You plug in more than one, x cubed gets bigger, you're adding more, and then you're adding one more. So yeah, the function's going up. I mean, fine. It, it could have gone up like that, but it's going up. And trust me, it goes up like that. Now, we want to revolve this area along about this line. X is equal to 2. So we want to revolve around there. Okay. That's pretty fair. Now, since we're, so their slabs are going to go parallel to what we are revolving about. So it is a delta x. Okay, it is a delta x. So we know that the volume is 2 pi times the integral of r. 2 pi r r times h times dx. Well, dx is going to go from 0 up to 1. Just going to go up to 1. Okay, now what is the radius? So, given an arbitrary point, how long is that? Well, I know if I went up the hair, it would be the same as this distance from 0 to 2. So I know it's going to be 2 minus something. And, you know, basically, that's an x value. We're going to take away x. It's going to be 2 minus x. Now, what is the height? Well, how tall is this? Well, like always, it's the top height minus the bottom height. For some x, the top height is x cubed plus x plus 1 minus the lower height. Well, the lower height is always 1. So x cubed plus x, well, if you add 1 and take away 1, you just get x cubed plus x. That is the height. And once we get that, it, it's really not bad. I mean, some of you may have a hard time getting the, that part. But once we get that, it's pretty much routine. You just distribute. You'll have 2x cubed plus 2x minus x to the fourth minus x squared dx okay so now we integrate this here's the 2 pi let's calculate that integral it's going to be x to the fourth over 2 
plus x squared minus x to the 5 over 5 minus x cubed over 3 and we go from 0 to 1. Since all in, since it's a polynomial, the constant, when you plug in 0, you're just going to get a constant. But what's in those brackets is a fifth degree polynomial where the constant is 0. Okay, so we just plug in 1. 1 to a power is 1 divided by 2. 1 to a power is 1. 1 to a power is 1 divided by 5. 1 to a power is 1 divided by 3. The common denominator is going to be 30. I'm going to multiply this fraction by 1. It's 15 over 15. This one by 30 over 30. This one by 6 over 6 and this one by 10 over 10. So the first fraction is going to be 15 over 30. Let me put the full 30 in front. The second fraction is going to be 30. The numerator is going to be 30 times 1 minus 1 times 6 minus 1 times 10. Okay. 30 minus 10 is 20, plus 5 is 35, minus 6 is going to be 29. Now, 2 goes into 15, 2 goes into 30 15 times. So it's going to be pi over 15. That is going to be the volume. Okay. Now, let us derive once again the formula for the volume of a, of a cone. Okay. So you have your x and y axis. You have that curve, that line. And we're going to, if we rotate it around the x axis, that's going to be the radius of the cone. And from here to here, that's going to be the height of the cone. When you revolve it, you get a cone whose height is h and whose volume, sorry, whose radius is r. Okay, so the volume is going to be 2 pi times the integral of r times h times dx dy. We didn't decide on that yet. Now, since we are revolving around the x-axis, we're going to put our slabs parallel to their x-axis. Now, just for the record, the equation of that is, well, the slope is the change in y over the change in x. Okay, that's going to be the equation of that line. Remember, if this distance is h, that's the height and this distance is r then this point must be h comma y x comma y and if you plug in 0 0 the right side is 0 because x is 0 and the left side is 0 so that point is on the line now if you let x be h you end up y being r so that is the correct equation. I had two points and I calculated the equation. Now, again, we're spinning along, we're rotating along the x-axis. So what we do in that case is we put our slab parallel to the x-axis. So 
that's going to be a delta y. So we're going y. Now, the lowest slab we can have is where y equals 0. And the highest one we can get to is where y equals r. Now, what is the radius? What is the radius? Now, remember, this point is h. Now, the radius, let's use this pink one. The radius is that distance. But that's just y, which is r over. Okay, so this tells me that x is or h over r y. I mean, that is true, but I don't know what I'm thinking. Like I said, the radius is y, which is good because I'm allowed to have y. Now we want to know the height. We want to know how long this is going to be. Well, given some x value, how long is this? Well, we know it's h here, and we know this distance is x. This is x, and this whole distance, yellow and the pink, is h. So then this yellow is going to be the right minus the left. It's going to be h minus x. h minus x. Good. I have x. It's going to be h minus h over r y. Okay. Let us crank this out, see what we get. We get 2 pi, the integral from 0 to r, and we'll distribute. We get y h minus h over r y squared. And we're integrating with respect to y. That is h and h over r are purely constants. So it's 2 pi, you get h y squared over 2 minus h over r, you get y cubed over 3. And y is going from 0 to r. Now the numerators have y's in them and not the denominators. So when you plug in 0, you're going to get 0. So let us just plug in r for y. So you get h times y squared over 2 minus h over 3r times y cubed. As I wrote, y is r. Okay. Now, one of these x's, r's, excuse me, will kill off that r. So... Let us get a common denominator of 6. Let's multiply top and bottom by 2 on this side. And let us fix our error. A moment ago, we had r cubed over r. And I kill off 1r on the bottom and 1r on the top, leaving 2 on the top. So now, everything's over 6. We have 3hr squared, 3hr squared, and we're taking away 2hr squared. So we are subtracting 2hr squares. We have three of them, shucks. And we're taking away two of them, so we have one of them over 6. And it's not as bad as I thought it is because I forgot to multiply by 2 pi. I apologize. I forgot to multiply by 2 pi. And when I multiply by 2 pi, that cancels out. And I get pi r squared h, pi r squared h over 3. And that is the volume of a cone.
is pi r squared h divided by 3. Okay, so we proved it twice. Now we're double sure that the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. We proved it using the show method just now, and in the last video, we used it proving, use, we proved it using the disk method. Okay, that completes this video on the show method.